a block of medical silicon. It actually sounds like muddy footsteps. Surprise. Hello, Jake Yu. Schönen guten Tag. I'm Markus Stemmler. And I'm Frank Cruz. We are sound designers on the movie All Quiet on the Western Front. So sound design is like an overall term for a lot of subdivisions, departments within the sound department. It's sound effects, it's backgrounds, dialogue editing, ADR editing, ADR recording, and a myriad of other things. But today we'll focus on the Foley a little bit more. What drew me into sound design really is the magic you can do. You can kind of steer the focus of the audience. I was drawn to film sound because there were no rules. You're creating the opposite of reality quite often. You could do anything. This film basically are taking place in Mart. So there's so many muddy footsteps from the soldiers. And we really wanted to make sure that uh, all the mud steps, they don't sound the same. It's hard to create different sounds if you just use one technique like the pit of mud in the, on the Foley stage. The Foley team tried to figure out different ways to create muddy footsteps. So this is a block made of medical silicon. It's the stuff you use, you know, for implants. Somehow the Foley department found out that if you squeeze it, it actually sounds like muddy footsteps. Surprise. The wardrobe department was generous enough to give us a full set of uniforms that you can see on screen, like the actual ones they used on set, including the boots. It's again layers of different elements because what you definitely don't want is kind of a, a form of static sound that sounds repetitive because then it becomes fake because everyone knows, you know, when you walk down the street, your own footsteps never sound the same. There's a scene in a movie where the starving soldiers grab a goose and make a stew. The sound for the stew, they use very different ingredients. Noodles out of rubber or cleaning towels, stuff like that. You can see our Foley artist here, Carsten Richter, prepping the pot and he's using hot water. And for a good reason, because the sound of cold and hot water is actually a little bit different, which I could demonstrate. Cold water first. Here comes the hot water. The hot water is way more smooth. And the cold water, if you focus on the top end of it, is way more sparkling. And it's a bit more transient. It's a sound that everyone knows from breakfast, probably. When you pour a tea or a cup of coffee, you kind of instinctively know if the water is hot or cold, but very few people are conscious about sometimes when you have to do really quick and dirty foley and the foley artist just grabs a sip of cold water to simulate the pouring of a cup of tea you immediately sense that it's fake it uh, simply boils down to well pun intended actually it boils down to the water being cold our director wanted a metaphorical sound for the war machine behind this war, the first industrialized war. So I had this idea about making a sound for the soil and the dirt and the mud that the soldiers were trying to avoid to be turned into. I just grabbed a contact microphone, which is a specialized microphone that just registers vibrations. I just recorded like a bunch of random movements through sand and rocks and stone and dirt based on this metaphorical idea of having the soil and earth kind of sounding around him while he's actually trying to survive. As Frank mentioned, with this microphone you pick up vibrations, so great way to, to get a rather abstract sound. You put the microphone in here, you just drag it around. 
imagine your body sinking into dirt and soil, it kind of rubbing against your eardrum. So it's kind of being buried alive, essentially. These hearing loss moments, there are a couple in the film. Usually the first instinct, or it's almost a film cliche, is you muffle everything down and everything becomes like you're holding your ears. But in this case, we went a little bit against that expectation. So what you hear is the actual close-up sound of Paul, the soldier, super dry and clear and untreated. You hear his close-up breathing and all the microscopic details of sand and dust sprinkling around him. It gets you super close to Paul and his emotions and connects you immediately to him. Another sound we needed frequently in this film is a sound called a body fall. Just people falling onto the ground on different surfaces. So one idea the Foley guys came up with, they made an actual torso made of ballistic gel. The same amount of ballistic gel weighs exactly the same as human flesh and has the same thickness and density and behavior. Uh, it's very similar. They built this dummy, put uniforms on it, dress it with the helmets, and then we threw it from the roof of the Foley studio. So it's a big playground, essentially. So we do have a scene where French army is using flamethrowers and we had some great recordings from set from a production sound mixer Victor Brasil. In the scene more flamethrowers were added from BFX and we had it to create more different layers of flamethrowers. What we actually recorded was a wheat burner the Foley department usually uses to when they start their barbecue, they have a lot of barbecues, uh, so it's always on standby. In this clip we see a great Foley mixer, Hans and Wands. Like he just would have everything you could think of. We have a whole warehouse hall, uh, full of like five flea markets compressed in one. A lot of it is trash. But all these objects are just useful, even if they're just worth uh, one dollar. The idea of the scene is that they can't see the tanks first and then all they hear is the sound and we didn't want to give away the engine sound. It needed to be an abstract metal sound that connected to the tanks but it should still be ominous and mysterious the whole time before they actually reveal themselves. That's how this idea developed to create like a iron whale. So I talked to the Foley department and asked them, can you create some groaning metal sound? They went into their warehouse and they came up with a large part of a tunnel of the air condition. And what you often can do is if you put a small object onto a large object, they both make kind of uh, melts into each other. So what they used to trigger the resonance of that metal piece was a small toy car actually. It's a bit ironic because at the end, we kind of use toy cars to add sounds to the tanks. So what happens in the scene when the tanks are up, the soldiers immediately start firing on them and these tanks are super resistant against all the bullet impacts. They more or less just tickle the tanks. There are so many bullet impacts, so you kind of want to create a variation of them so they don't just uh, sound all the same. The Foley guys uh, just set up a little drumming session. We just used those sounds and layered them to create a bit of a variety. In the uniform recycling montage at the beginning of the film, there's this transition. We're in the sewing machine workshop and you hear like first all the sewing machines doing, you know, everyone working. It cuts to the close up of the needle and then the needle slowly transitions into a machine gun. Edward wanted that sequence to reflect like the war machine that I talked about, the industry behind the war and so all, all these images are essentially symbols for that. Entschuldigung, die gehört schon wem? Ja, aber ihr wollt zu klein für den Kerl, ne? Da kommt immer wieder vor. Hier. 
Ah, idiot. I also always loved the way of kind of sonically verbalizing what sad history is attached to that very uniform, connecting the sad past with the most likely future. Thanks so much for your interest in our work and having a look at some of the secrets of the sound design of this film. Thank you, everyone. It was good fun. Thank you for having us. Auf Wiedersehen. Uh, thanks, JQ, and bis bald. Thank you.